Shalom, Yasharala, Shalom. It's the brother Ash Ibad coming back in the spirit, giving our praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Bahashem and Mashiach, Yahweh Double honors to you, brothers, to you, elders, pushing the truth across the four winds of the earth in fullness and sincerity. And I want to give a mighty Shalom to the hopeful elect, Yasharala. Y'all seen the title? Um, you know, this is called, um, you know, the, the lust of the world causes you to be unfruitful. You know, y'all brothers understand, you know, the world we live in, this monetary world that we live in, and a vast majority of models that we look up to, role models that we look up to in our community and just in society at, at large, they love money. They love money. They'll put anything over money. And for those of y'all brothers who've been following COJ and other brothers who are into the occult, you understand what these people do for money. Look at the screen right now. You got Floyd Money Mayweather. Floyd Money Mayweather. Why? Because that brother idolizes money. You want to know another thing about money, Floyd? That brother more than likely is 99.9% is .9 sure he's a Jake, man. And you know what's going to happen with Floyd? Lest he repent, lest he change and get out of that. But he's already in too deep. Is he going to be killed and destroyed? And that's one thing that brothers got to understand. Like, when you come into this truth, you have to be willing to go it out. You have to be willing to take money off of that pedestal. You see, when you were in the world, all you did was live for money. You had to get them bands. Why did you need the bands? So you could feel validated by this world. So all these other nations, all these other people, all these worldly women could see that you had some money because you as a so-called black man, you didn't have anything in the world. So-called Latino men, indigenous native men, you didn't have nothing in the world. You were at the bottom. So what did they always tell you? I started from the bottom, now I'm here. Why? Because I got the money to clock the fame. But the thing that they don't tell you is that out of all the other nations, you are the biggest consumer. You are the biggest debt spender. You are the least to invest your money. And the main thing is you are the least to manage your money and you don't understand what money's role in your life really is. You see a lot of so-called black men like to put money in their soul as a spirit, right? When the only thing that can validate your soul is the spirit of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. So that leaves a lot of our people who are lost, who are dry bones, to be moving without life and thinking that something that has no type of monetary gain is going to allow you to reach the next level. Man, you're delusional. And one thing that you're going to need to understand when you come into this truth is that if you can't give up the things of the world, you can't not just talk about money, but the lust of women, the lust of notoriety, the lust of fame, the lust of your passion over the most high, your how about you now shy, then you're not going to be a worthy sacrifice. So I want to get into this video. So let's go to the Blue Letter Bible. First things first, let me uh, increase the screen for y'all brothers. Y'all can see this. One of my favorite scriptures, it says, Sirach chapter 2 verse 1, My son, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for temptation. And it's not just temptation from the demons, but it's temptations from your flesh because at the end of the day, your flesh wants things of the world. Your flesh needs to feel things. Your flesh needs to see things. Your flesh needs to smell things and hear things in order for it to be satisfied. But your spirit, what? Your spirit has to constantly deny the flesh. Remember the scriptures say, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you in a constant battle. And one main thing that Esau Edom likes to use to control us is our need and our love for money. He puts us in these disadvantages, positions. He manip manipulates the system to allow him to come on top. And you in this constant hamster wheel, constantly needing more and more and more for you to feel like you're something. But you got to understand, you got to learn this verse right here. It says, whatsoever is brought upon me, take cheerfully and be patient when you are changed to a low estate. And what does this mean? What does this mean at the root? When you come into this truth, man, you may be a brother like me. When I first came into the truth, man, I, I'll just be honest with y'all, man. I, I wanted bands. I wanted six figures. I wanted to make a quarter million dollars. Bro, I was obsessed with it, man. I had a, a Kobe Bryant complex where I had to get these things. And a lot of you brothers, and I'm using myself as an example, not to glorify myself, but a lot of you brothers are probably in that same position. You might have wanted to be a doctor. You might have wanted to be a top physician. You might have wanted to be a lawyer. You know, you might have wanted to start your own company and, and really make something. Because a lot of us brothers didn't just come working security jobs or just come straight out of high school. A lot of y'all brothers had real plans for your life, but the most high had a higher plan for you. And it's not just talking about money. It could be brothers wanting to be a basketball star, a rap star, a baseball star. 
But the one thing that you have to understand is that the most high for him to be exalted and for you to be renewed and reformed, he had to bring you down low. He had to take the women away from you. He had to take the money away from you. A lot of times he had to take the job opportunities away from you. That's what was really going on with the, you know, the jab and things like that is that it was stripping a lot of men, a lot of women of basic things that they needed. And those who are weak in the mind, those who are weak in the spirit, they fold it. But you got to be able to take whatever may come upon you. Some brothers in the truth is homeless. Some brothers in the truth don't got no car. Some brothers in the truth can't keep a stable job past six, seven months and they're barely getting enough to get by. But they're patient. And why are we patient? Because we understand the promises of what's to come. When you're in the kingdom, you're going to have all these things. But a lot of men in this truth and not just men who are trying to get into this truth, but also men who've been in this truth for a very long time. Satan's going to tempt them with lust. He's going to tempt them with that 513C. He's going to tempt them with all them subscribers. Getting putting subscribers over the doctrine. Putting subscribers over re rebuking your people and reproaching your pre people to the point where that tree that you had is not going to bear any more fruit. And what do you have a say about trees that bear no fruit? And I'm going to get into the, to the main meat and potatoes of the lesson. Let's go to the book of um, it's like, I think it's John chapter 15, verse uh, 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth fruit. You got to understand, when you are a corrupt branch, when you are a branch that's hanging by a thread, meaning you're about to be sifted out. If you're not bearing fruit, if you're not connected to that vine, if you're not connected to the state of your Yahweh Shahamashiach spirit, you're going to be taken away. And that vine is going to be what? It's going to be purged off. Let's go down to a uh, verse... Four, it says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. And you see one thing that happens with a lot of brothers with a lot of you know, people in this thing, man, is that your branch starts to become corrupted because you start to get deceived. You start to think about that bag more than honoring the Sabbath. You start to think about your business in the world compared to your spiritual business. Are you doing the work? Are you laboring? Are you making your calling and election sure and storing up treasures in heaven? Are you constantly worried about things in this world? And you're going to have these thoughts like, man, I'm not, I'm, man, I'm a bum, dog. Look at me two years ago. I used to have all this money. I'm a bum, bro. Man, no woman want to look at me. Look at my car, bro. But you got to transcend that. You got to transcend that carnal mind state. You got to be renewed in your mind to stop thinking that the things that you get on this side are above the things that you're getting in the spirit. And that's why Yahweh Shah said, if a man abide not in me, it's not just talking about him in the scene right then, but his essence, who he was as a man, that example. Yahweh Shah constantly said, riches is going to be the downfall of many, that you can't be a rich man and enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's the true discerner. That's the true uh, sifter of those who are chosen compared to those who are just called is that the chosen, those who be of the most high elect, they gonna give up everything. They gonna lose their life for Yahweh Shah Mashiach compared to those who just kind of in this thing and kind of out. They not gonna really want to do that because when you do that things, you're gonna lose friends, family, women, your position. You may lose your job. You may lose that nice lifestyle. You gotta be willing to suffer affliction to compared to enjoying these things, but you know, living in sin and in temptation. Now let's go to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6. We'll start at verse 10. Verse like I'll read verse 5. If it says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. So what is Paul saying to Timothy? He says, These men suppose that gain is godliness, meaning that just like in the Christian church, I believe Jesus, so I'm going to get a mansion, and I'm going to get two cars and a Bentley. Not realizing that you're not in the spirit at all. That's why he said to withdraw yourself from these men. Because these men have a corrupt mind. Because remember, brothers, your fruit comes from your mind. Adam and Eve didn't eat a literal apple, but their minds got corrupted with the sin of idolatry, which allowed them to go off. So just like you have a corrupt mind, it's synonymous with having a corrupt fruit. That your mind, that your eye, that your focus is, is focused on money, is focused on mammon, 
compared to focusing on your God, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. Let's get that in the book of Matthew, chapter six. Right? So you gotta always have a have your eye on the prize. And always remember what that prize truly is. Matthew 6 and 19, it says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where three thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor, moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart, aka your mind, be also. And that's one thing, bro. If you still new to the truth, if you still miss the lukewarm kitty kitty pool party, you're trying to go into the warm side of the pool, and you're trying to go into the cold side of the pool. Look, man, listen, you have to make a choice. Are you going to lay up your treasures in your bank account, your 401k, with this fiat money? That's evaporating, inflation is hidden. Are you laying yourselves up treasure in heaven where can't nobody take your riches? Where can't because you gotta remember when it says when you lay up your treasures upon earth where moss and rust does corrupt, not only is the money corrupt and the money doesn't last, because the money you get on this side is gone just like that. But on top of that, your body, let's say example, let's say the collapse didn't happen for another 40 years. You lived an entire lifetime on earth. Your body's still corrupting. You're not going to be able to use that money forever. Money can't buy you happiness. Money can't buy you eternal life. Money can't do these things. So that money, the things that you worked up, they're going to corrupt whether you like it or not. And where thieves do break and steal. A lot of brothers don't understand that when you have worldly money, you have worldly ambitions. You have worldly people. People willing to steal from you. Your family turning on you because you're making bands. Look at all these you know, famous NBA NFL players. Family backstabbed them. You know, you had the thing with Tim Duncan where his tax agent stole like two, three million. Kevin Garnett's a uh, financial advisor because people are naturally wicked and inherently like to feed their flesh that the treasure that you lay up on this earth can never amount to the treasure in heaven. Because can't nobody go to your house and take your money? Come on, dog. Are you serious? And the reason why the, 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 the treasures don't rust or nor corrupt is because if you are of the elect, you will be able to enjoy those treasures in heaven for an eternity, everlasting life, where nobody can go in and break through nor steal. Why? Because Yahweh moves in complete order. Yahweh Shah moves in complete order. So when Yahweh Shah's kingdom is established, ain't no Moabite gonna be able to scam you. Ain't no Edomite gonna be able to manipulate you. Ain't no wicked woman gonna be able to, uh, you know, sign, so, you know, get you to get a marriage uh, license. And next, you know, you paying her alimony and child support and the things that you work. A lot of brothers, and it's true, a lot of so-called black men have gotten screwed over by the damn financial system, man. Because it's not for, meant for you to win. But in Yahweh Shah's financial system is only meant for you to win and this is what i gotta put and ingrain inside brother's mind you want to work smarter not harder there's a, a cliche saying work smarter not harder why would you brothers want to work your ass off for 20 30 years on this side to enjoy your life for they're not saying brothers can't do things and have ambitions but i mean when you when you, you got to remember brothers you know i come from a sales background I've run into brothers who knows what it takes to be billionaires and hundred things. You meet them all the time. Brothers, you know, brothers know businessmen like that. What they do, working six days a week, 12 hours. And on their rest day, they got to deal with their family, their wife, and all these things that they're not really happy. And the only thing that fuels them is constantly making more and more money to the point where they can't even enjoy it themselves, right? When you on a vacation, the brother talking about going back into the office. Not saying that a man can't labor, but what I'm saying is that your mind, you're not able to really enjoy your fruits on this side. But when you're able to enjoy your fruits on the other side, on the other kingdom, then you understand that, hmm, let me devote my life to you, how about Shemi Shah, and I get an eternity return. That's the most highest amount of interest that you can get. And me, I, I, I saw it like this. I said, look, if I devote my life to the most high and I get everlasting life, that's the biggest return on my investment. Why would I not do that? Compared to me working my ass off, doing these jobs and dealing with these people, I'm not gonna make no money from that. And that's why Matthew 6 and 21 says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So you gotta focus on spiritual treasure. Verse 22, it says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve your howl and mammy. And one thing that brothers just don't want to accept, bro, you're not going to be a millionaire Israelite. 
Bro, you're not going to be a 500,000 there Israelite. The vast majority of y'all brothers ain't even going to make six figures. Now, I don't know, brothers, how much money you make or not. But the reason why I'm saying these things is for you to truly, truly serve the Most High, keep his law, statutes, and commandments, go out there and preach, go out there and teach, go out there and edify, go out there and, re and, re and reform yourself. You have to take yourself away from this wicked system. You have to take yourself from this wicked system economically. Because when you look at how this thing is run, the vast majority of the ways that you're making money is dealing with wickedness, whether it's on a holiday like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, whether it's you working on that Friday night, that Saturday morning, when you can get contacts and things like that. But are you gonna serve the most high? You gonna keep his Sabbath? You gonna keep his new moon? Uh you gonna keep his feast days? A lot of brothers is having an issue using their their sick days for the holy days, man. They're not willing to take off because like, man, bro, I can make 200 three hundred dollars. But the most high said to return unto him ten times more. Uh, than when you when you fell off. I think that's in the book of Tobin. I'm just quoting it. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Solomon Butcher. Salaki. Salaki. I don't have my apocryphal on Salaki, but there's a scripture in Tobin. I think it's chapter three where it says, uh, with us having departed from him, let us return unto him 10 times, 10 times more. And in these times with all the chaos going on, all the affliction going on, you will be the fool to not serve the most high so you can make some you know some chunk change in these last days you have to understand that you can't serve the most high and still get hella bands you can't continuously allow your your business to flourish and become this big name in babylon and serve the lord you're only going to grow in one direction you're either going to grow spiritually or you're going to grow uh in the flesh and you're going to neglect yourself in the spirit and at the end of the day dog if you really believe in these scriptures and you're going to believe what solomon said this is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And you got to understand that. Why does Solomon say that? Who is Solomon? Solomon was a man who was the, one of the richest men on earth. He was a billionaire in today's terms, right? He had a thousand women. He had all these things. But what else did Solomon have? Solomon, hey, bro, Solomon getting that judgment. For those brothers who don't believe in reincarnation, he getting his judgment. Now, other brothers may say this and that. I'm not going to get into that on this lesson, but you have to understand. You have to know that the main thing that you need to be doing is fearing the Most High and keeping his commandments. Because if not, then you're always going to end up in that lake of fire. You're going to look back on judgment day like, damn, was it really worth it, bro? Was it really worth it for me to do these things in the world and think I'm going to come back on the other side and be? No, bro. Don't be deceived. Don't let no man deceive you. Wicked will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's a stated fact, a stated commandment. So you brothers can't sit here and think, oh, I got what I mean in the world. I'm going to end up on the other side. No, you're not because you're going to be a thief and a robber. But getting back into the main point, let me go back to 1 Timothy, right? <clears throat> All right, so 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, but godliness with contentment is great. Which means you have to be content with whatever position you're in, whether that's 100K, 200K, 30K. Some of you brothers may be in a position where you have to live with your mom and your, your father for a certain period of time. Brothers may be in debt. Brothers may be constantly working, but you have to be content with what you got, man. You have to. You might have a roach infested apartment. You may be barely getting by. You're going to have a, a shitty car. Like, it's, it's just, it's just what's going to come with it, man. But you have to be content with what you have on this on the good and on the bad. Verse 7, it says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. And what this is talking about is saying that you don't need, you can't be one of these Israelites, oh, I don't need nothing. Oh, I don't need no car. I don't need no look, bro. If you can get a house, get a house, bro. <laughs> if you can get an apartment, get an apartment. But understand that nothing in the flesh is permanent. You brought nothing into the world but your body, and the only thing that you're going to carry with you is your body. It's going to return to the ground. You ain't going to be able to carry your five iPhones and your 10 Louis Vuitton shirts. And that's what a lot of our people get. They get so caught up in the consumerism, thinking that, that this is the only life they live, not realizing that this is just a temper. This is a pit stop, my boy. This is just a pit stop, my boy. You got more important things to handle. And you got to have to, you're going to have to stand in front of the judge. If, if you think that the things of this world was more important than the things that are to come, 
And this is one thing that happens to a lot of brothers who get, you know, more and more deeper into the truth. Slocky. Slocky. Uh, it's verse 9. It says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some convert coveted after, they have error from the faith. Meaning what? The love of money was the root of all evil. That even though you came into the faith, you coveted the things of this world and it made you error. You had the spirit of truth on you, but then you had the spirit of error because you love that five. Hey, brother's taking five of one, three seeds. Now, we don't know who exactly took it, but we know that there's some people who's going off, you know, and they're going to be revealed on that day when Howard Shaw returns. You got a lot of brothers who's in the truth. Now they wanted to go back to make music. Now they wanted to go back to get their business. Why? Because you can get the women, the pretty women, the car, the clout, the notoriety that you just quite frankly ain't going to get in this truth. If you are a true man of the Lord, you are going to have the vast majority of people not like you, not be appealed, not be attracted to you because you are what? An amalgamation of the bitter book. People see you and they have a bitter taste in their mouth. And the only way that they can truly re resonate with you is if they're willing to swallow what you're taking and get that same understanding as them. If they don't have that tough stomach to digest who you are and what you stand for, then they're going to be repelled, they're going to throw up, and they're going to run as far away from you as possible. And you have to be okay with that. And you have to understand that it comes with you losing a lot of things in the world. It's just that simple, man. It's just that simple. You cannot serve the most high man. And another thing you brothers got to understand is that if you allow yourself to serve mammy and you are in this truth, you are going to be corrupted. And don't think that the most high and look, certain men may have that opportunity. But think about a tree that has a corruptible branch, a corruptible fruit. What does the gardener do? What does the vineyard do? They cut off that tree, they throw it away and they replace it with a new fruit. And that's going to be your that's going to be your spot in the kingdom. Let me let me get the scripture real quick and I'm going to explain it a little bit later. This is uh, Matthew chapter 13, and I'll go to uh, verse 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heard the word, heard the word, but the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word, and he became unfruitful. He became unfruitful because he got deceived by the things of this world. And I've already went into it. But you got to understand that when you become deceived, it's, it, it's not just the money, brothers. You can have money. The scriptures say that money is a strong defense and it's good to have money. But the thing is, is when your mind gets corrupted by the money, because your mind is the true fruit of your how about Shem Shah. That's why he said, have a renewed mind. Let's get that in the book of um, Ephesians chapter four. Right. So this is the book of Ephesians chapter 4, I think it's verse 19. Oh, here it is, verse 22. That you put, I'll read verse 21. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shai, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And any brother in this thing knows the type of mindset you have when you was focused, man, I gotta get my bands up. I gotta, you used to be the dude on Instagram. You got the little honey. You got the little honey on your forearm. I know some of y'all used to do that. I never did that, but I know some of y'all from the hood, from me, from the gutter. Y'all used to do that. Oh, we popping. We in Vegas. We in Florida. Bro, I got this one. Brothers be be posting their money, they check on the damn screen, them turning up like, yeah, we made, we made it. Money is the only thing. You was, you was, you was corrupt, man. You was just feeding your flesh, feeding your lust. When you came into the truth, you heard the word, and what? You got renewed in the spirit of your mind. Meaning what? You understood that yeah, money was cool, money was great, but it wasn't everything. And even when you were in the world, a lot of brothers, even before you came into the truth, a lot of brothers understood that money wasn't everything because you saw the people who had the money and you see that they cutthroat, they conniving, they wanted to kill people, commit sacrifices, you know, blood sacrifices allegedly, willing to, you know, cut out their family, cut out their friends for that money, not realizing that, bro, yeah, the money is great. But it's not everything. And if you got to cut off your family for something because they're wicked or you just, they're not really there for you, that's understandable. But a lot of people, they put that money over things that, you know, that over people and, and, and just opportunities that will make you a lot happier. Money is not everything. But certain brothers and certain sisters is going to go down that path because that's just the, the lot that the Most High is destined in them. Now read verse uh, 24. It says that you put on a new man, which after Yahweh, is created in righteousness and true holiness. 
And when you look at the example of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, he didn't even have a, a permanent dwelling place. Yahweh Shai was a wanderer. Yahweh Shai was going from place to place, preaching and teaching and edifying. Did Yahweh Shai think of himself as lowly? Oh, I'm just this broke dude, bro. I don't got no money like that. Man, Yahweh Shai wasn't worried about that because he got the most trick. Yahweh Shai is the most richest man in history. Because he has an everlasting kingdom with all, and that's why I was, let's, let's go get that actually. I think that's in Matthew's lock. I think it's Matthew 4, yeah. Matthew 4, and we'll go to verse 7. Yahweh shall said unto him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then say Yahweh shall unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for if it for it is written, You shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And that's the thing that you gotta understand. Just like Yahweh Shah was tempted by Satan, you all gonna have your small little temptation. You all gonna have your small little sufferings where you gotta go without and you gotta be willing to be okay with that, be willing to be content. Because whatever state the most high put you in monetarily is the right state. As long as you're not in a position where you don't have no freedom, the most high put you in the exact same the exact position that he wanted you to be in. But you have to accept that and you have to trust in the Lord. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. What does it say? It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear your howl and depart from evil. And that's the thing is that you're going to have to depart from that, from that, 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 that uh, covetous way. Because when you covenant things in the flesh... You would do anything for him. Not saying that you can't want certain things if you have certain goals and whatnot, but it's the difference between wanting something and being obsessed, like coveting it. When you brothers read a lot of these books by, you know, Tony Robbins, motivational speaker, what's the brother? Um, Les Brown, um, the black dude who be yelling, uh, Thompson, Thompson or Thomas, uh, some Tom, I've got his name. You know, all these brothers when they make these videos, and even if you read Thinking Go Rich by the by the author Napoleon Hill, even though you're Luciferian. The main thing that they said, if you want to change your life, it has to be the only thing you think about. You got to eat, breathe, sleep these things. You got to eat, breathe, and sleep these things and tap into the, to the creator's universe and your life is going to change. You know what's funny? He's right about that. I can't sit here and lie. I read those books by, him, by Napoleon Hill, Thinking Grow Rich. But you want to know that same concept that he's talking about? Replace that money with your how and watch how you should never fail, man. Watch how you should never fail. The scriptures say to return unto your how with thy whole heart. You know, you got to return to your how with thy whole heart. And a lot of times what the most high will do to make you a more uh, a sacrifice without blemish is he will allow you to sacrifice those things that were holding you back from serving him. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 16 and we'll go to verse, uh, slaki, slaki, slaki. verse 24. He said, then say ye how shy unto his disciples. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit it if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And that's the thing. Is that when and I read verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father and with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. And again, if you're a true believer, you believe everything that Yahweh Shah says. See, that's the difference from somebody saying they believe, but somebody truly believing in me and circumcising their mind. Is when you believe that the Most High says that I will reward you for your doings. I will bless you above all the nations. You see Yahweh Shah said, deny yourself in the flesh and take up your cross and follow me. If you lose your life for me, I will return it to you a hundredfold. You got to fully believe it. You got to have faith in that. And a lot of brothers just quite frankly don't have faith, which is why they have faith more in their own confidence and how they can get things in the world than actually serving Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shah with the fullness of their heart. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Because in the flesh, you're not going to be able to see, you know, those lessons you did. You're not going to be able to see 
the the message you might have uh, talked to a brother on the subway telling him he's an Israelite. You never know that the words that come out of your mouth, the things that you've done, how you've allowed people to be renewed, and how the Most High is allowing you to store a spiritual treasure, spiritual treasure, a video that got five views, 10 views, 20 views. You never know in the dark what that could have done. That could have stopped somebody from killing themselves. That could have stopped a brother from committing adultery. That could have stopped the brother from calling on the wrong name, man. And you're going to know all these things on Judgment Day. But that's the money that you have to be storing up. And you got to focus on that spiritual money because when you come into your flesh, the things that we do, the world looks at it as foolish because they're not receiving things of the Spirit. But let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Which I read verse 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of Yahweh, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So you're not going to be able to truly focus on the spiritual works and the spiritual uh, uh, money unless the Most High Spirit comes upon you to, to show you why that's more important. I couldn't just change my mind and stop being obsessed with making money and doing all these things in sales. It had to be the Holy Spirit to show me like, hey, bro, that's not the right way. Yeah, you was making all this money, but you wasn't being 100% honest. Yeah, you was making all this money, but you you was more focused. You wasn't keeping my Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't keeping my Sabbath. You was placing money as an idol. And even uh, in Sirach, it warns against that. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 31. And we'll go to verse, um, I think we'll go to verse five. I'll read, uh, so I can. Verse five, it says, he that loveth gold shall not be justified. And he that followeth corruption shall have enough thereof. Yahweh has, I mean, it's like it, it's like it. Gold has been the ruin of many and their destruction was present. Gold is a stumbling block unto them that sacrifice unto it. And what does it mean? When you sacrifice gold unto it, meaning what? You place money as an idol. You sacrifice things in your life so that way you can have more of it. That's why it says every fool shall be taken of it. It's a stumbling block. A lot of brothers, man, they're not going to come into the fold because they, they can't go being broke. They can't go being broke. They can't go losing their woman because they're not making as much money because you're going out there making videos and following the commandments, dog. You know, you're not you're not going out on Black Friday to go and fund your business. You're not trying to get these little worldly business connects so you can make a name for yourself. Man, I don't give a damn about none of that, man. The only thing I care about is going out there, laboring, making the money I need to, coming back home and serving you how about Shimei Shah. It's that simple, man. That's why verse 8 says, Blesses the rich that is found without blemish and has not gone after gold. For who is he? And we will call him blessed. For wonderful things has he done amongst his people. So the rich that is found without blemish is those who have money, but they didn't become corrupted. Because another thing you got to understand is that the love of that money is going to corrupt your soul. All our people, what, scamming, scheming, so much fraud going on, people stealing your damn. You you buy something on Amazon, next thing you know, somebody got that numbers to your account trying to take, because they need that money. They need it, man. A lot of people out here struggling. A lot of people don't have faith in your how. What's happening? They took the jab, they took the shot, or they didn't take it, but now they're trying to find all these ways around the loophole, not understanding that there's only one way. There's only one way up to the Father. There's only one way up to everlasting life, and that's through Hamashiach. That's through following his ways. That's why Yahweh Shah came as a lowly man, because he understood that that was the only way that would allow you to have the right mindset for you to make it into the kingdom. This is John 10 and 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not into the door into the sheep hole, sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. The Yahweh is going to lead you out of, the, out of the ways of this world and show you that his ways are above the ways of the world if you can hear his voice. But you got to be blessed to have ears to ear, hear and eyes to see. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers, they don't see. They don't see the vision. They don't got the vision. But what did, what did Yahweh say uh, to Habakkuk? Let's let's get that real quick. Uh, Here we go. Habakkuk chapter 2. And we'll go to verse... 
3. It says for the vision, I'll read verse 2. It says, Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Making it plain what's going to happen to society. Making it plain what's going to happen to them blue Benjamins. Making it plain what's going to happen to the economy. But it says that he may run that readeth it. Meaning what? You're running away from mystery Babylon. You're running away from being a worldly man because you understand what's going to happen to this world. You're going to lose your life in it. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. And the reason, and I'll read verse 4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. You have to have faith to understand that the economy, you see, if the economy was to just collapse like that, all these lukewarm Israelites would be on, oh, oh, praise to Yahweh, Bosh, Yahweh, Shai. But Yahweh knows your heart. Yahweh knows what you was doing last week. You wasn't trying to honor the Sabbath because you thought you could get money. A lot of y'all brothers don't even like to take days off to worship the holy days, man. You take every day off so you can go to that Christmas party or that Thanksgiving party, you know. Or that 4th of July party, but when it comes to the Passover, you know where to be found. When it comes to the Day of Atonement, you eating up a storm. When it came to the Feast of Tabernacle, you wasn't willing to do it. Because at the end of the day, the lust of being in this world, not just including talking about money, but just everything, it ate you up. And you can't be poor in the flesh and rich in spirit. You just can't. A lot of y'all brothers be talking and talking and talking, but when that time comes where you got to give up them things in the flesh, you're not willing to do it. Verse 9, it says... Two in Revelation 2 and 9, it says, I know your works in tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. What is Yahweh Shah saying? He knows those who are being faithful and working and dealing with tribulation and going through poverty. Car not working. Bill can't go he's behind on taxes. You just it's just it's like it's a never ending uh uh thing where you just gotta continue to work and suffer and suffer, but the most high does it on purpose so you can get closer to him. That's why he, the Yahweh Shah said, You are rich. That's why it says, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Because what is one of the representations of Satan? Mammon. So Satan will deceive you through the riches of this world. And a lot of brothers say, I'm Jew this, I'm Jew that, I'm an Israelite, man. But you focus more on getting your bands than, than worshiping and venerating your how about Shemiah and Shah. That's why we can go to the uh, book of Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation real quick. Um, Salaki. Revelation chapter 3, I think it's verse 10. Um, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make to them, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And of course, Revelation 2 and 9 is talking about the fake you know who's, but it's also talking about the fake, uh, the fake you know who's in its truth. The fake Israelites who say that they're Israel, but they're not. They're 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 feeding their business and their flesh and things like that. They're not real Jews. They're they're Jews of the circumcision. But they're not circumcised in their mind. They're not circumcised in their heart, right? But getting back to the main point, you got to be patient. That's why the scripture says, be patient when you are brought into a lowly state and endure because you are going to be brought low. And if you can't accept that and you start going back into that worldly, dude, I got to start working. I got to start doing this. Then you're going to forget this one scripture. And I'm going to end it on this. This is the book of Matthew. It's like it's, uh, chapter 6. And we'll go all the way down to verse, uh, I'll read verse 25. It says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body the raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which by taking though can add one cubit unto his stature. And I'm gonna go down and I'll read verse 30. It says, Wherefore, if you how is so called the grass of the field, which is which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, or you a little faith? Take therefore no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek you first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day 
is the evil thereof. And basically what Yahweh shot is stating is that yes, you're gonna be in times where you need money for clothes and food and you wondering how you're gonna make it, how you're gonna put food on the table. But it says, seek you the first the kingdom of, of Yahweh and all these things will be added unto you. Because if the most high, the almighty, the one who has literally created everything and is in full control of everything, allows you to come into this truth and get this understanding, then how easy is it for him to get you some food and some water or to get some money? The scripture says in Sirach, it is nothing for the most high to make a poor man rich and a rich man poor. So if he wanted you to be rolling in dough and rolling in bands, he would have a long time ago. But you got to have faith that he's going to always watch over you and guide you even when you're in a short time. So with that being said, brothers, man, don't be like Money Floyd. Don't be like a lot of these brothers in the truth who, you know, and it's all alleged, of course, might have taken the 501-3C because it got too hard. And next thing you know, they're going off because they're going to have their place in the lake of fire. And none of you brothers want to, you know, be a part of that judgment. So with that being said, I give all praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And a mighty shalom unto you, to you brothers, to you sisters of the nation of Yasharala. Until next time, man. Peace.